Hey there YouTube, what's up? It's Descent here, and so uh, I just wanted to show you guys today uh, kind of a step-by-step -step process on how to take a Cinema 4D uh, file that you've created and import it into Unity and then make a Google Cardboard app where you can walk around inside of it for Android. So uh, what you're going to need for this is you're going to need the Google uh, VR SDK, uh, and so I'll have this link down below. Uh, you're also going to need obviously Cinema 4D. Uh, I'm going to be using R18. Um, so, I mean, if you want to be able to do stuff with Fracture Veroni and you want to be able to, um, do all that sort of stuff, then, yeah, uh, you can just buy from their website. Uh, there's Field Creator Studio, so this is the FCS toolbox that I'm going to be using for exporting to an OBJ file from, um, Cinema 4D. And if you don't know what any of those words mean, don't worry, I'll show you. Right now it's in maintenance mode, which is kind of inconvenient. This is the uh, this is the only time I have to record this video though, so I have to do it now. Um, but yeah, there'll just be a download button and you just click on that and then you can download it, it's a free tool. Um, and then you're also gonna need uh, Android Studio, um, if you're gonna be exporting to Android at least. If you're gonna be doing this to iPhone, I'm afraid, to, I think it's called Xcode, but I'm not 100% sure, you're gonna have to look it up. Uh, and figure that out. I, I can't really help you with that one, sorry about that. Uh, and then you're also gonna obviously need Unity. And so I'll have all these links down below and uh, let's get into it. So uh, I just did the modeling on this. This is a super simple scene as you can tell. Uh, like there's really not much to it. Uh, it's just essentially a sphere with some twists for the trees, a, with a, cylind uh, a uh, yeah, cylinder underneath it and then just like a small house and whatever. Uh, the one thing that I will say about this uh, that I have that I found is at least the best way of doing this is I've made this all down into one object. The reason that I've done that is because if you're coming from Cinema 4D, Unity is kind of, I have to be honest, it's kind of a bitch to put everything, align everything inside of the scene as it was inside of Cinema 4D. It is very annoying and also so is the texturing. So what I've done is I've made all of this one object. So essentially it was a plane with a displacer and a polygon reduction and then I put the ground texture on there. Uh, the tree is the cylinder with the trun, it's supposed to be trunk but I misspelled it to trun texture there. Um, the leaf texture for the trees uh, is there I'm just gonna close this this is the this is my first attempt at doing it um, I'm just gonna save uh, and so yeah so we have all the textures already done so we have the UVW mapping and everything's all been done so now uh, once you have your scene all you're gonna do is you're just gonna click on it or if you have multiple objects highlight all the objects it's up to you whichever way you want to do it whatever it doesn't matter um, so click it, and then you're going to want to go to FCS Tools, and then you're going to want to go to Select and Go. And so first you have to select your format. Now, I've tried FBX because I know that was the recommended was to do an FBX file. The only thing that I found that was a problem was the meshes weren't importing properly. So I'm going to do, I've been doing Wavefront OBJ, like the .obj files, uh, just because, again, FBX, it was doing a weird thing where it would take all the meshes and invert them 90 degrees so it wouldn't work properly. So I would personally just do that. Um, so scale, make sure that's in centimeters, uh, and then choose where you want to export it to. So I'm just going to export it to here. Um, now I'm going to have to delete these two because two of them in the file that I have ready because it's the second time of me doing this. So now once you have that, just hit go. Export has been finished successfully, brilliant. And so now, uh, let's close these windows down. If I go into the folder, there we go, and then go assets. So now you'll see I have an OBJ file and I have an MTL file. So now I've already made, so I'm just making a scene right now. So just name it, 3D, whatever. Uh, I'm not gonna add any assets package. Um, just because I don't really need them. Okay, cool. So, now, when you download the Google VR for Unity SDK, you know, just come in the file like this. Uh, what I do is I just normally bring the window down and then just drag and drop it into the window and then that will bring the package in. Uh, and so, 
if you already know what you're doing, you can just tick mark the boxes for whichever assets you actually want. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference because we're not really going to be doing much today, so I'm just going to leave all of them ticked and just import everything. Um, but all that you'd actually need if you have a slower machine is you're just going to need the GVR viewer main. So you're just going to need the GVR viewer main and all of the prefabs folder is all you're going to need. Um, so you can go through and tick mark box those. I just can't really be bothered right now. And just waiting for that to all download. Okay, cool. So that's all in there now. And so what I'm gonna do as well is just going to grab the object that we just made. And I'm gonna grab the OBJ file first, drag that in, and then I'm gonna drag the MTL file in afterwards. Brilliant, close that. And so now, before you import it, there's a couple things I just want to go over. So if you're like me, and so I'll just import this in so you can just see what it looks like right now. So it's going to be huge because I accidentally made it huge, but that's all right. But you'll see it doesn't actually, when you look at it like this, it doesn't actually quite look the same as it did in cinema, right? Like it's, you can tell there's a lot of definition that's been lost in here. And so that's because specifically for this, what I did for this is I did a polygon reduction. So I was doing a low poly style for this game. And so the problem with that is that there's something called fong shading. And so what fong shading does is it essentially makes it so that the, uh, it's kind of complicated to explain, but essentially if you're going for something photorealistic, you don't have to worry about this. You can just ignore this part. But if you're going for something like what I'm doing here with the low poly, uh, what you have to do is you have to click on the object here inside of the assets, not up here inside of the assets. And where it says import normals and tangents, you have to change it to calculate and then bring down this number. This is effectively going to be your fong angle for those of you that know what that means. Uh, so you want to just bring that down to zero or if you're doing something photorealistic, leave it to the default value of 60 or change it if you know what you're doing. Okay. So by default as well, you'll just see there's just like this weird material on here. Uh, so that's where the MTL file comes in. That's effectively going to be your um, materials file. I don't remember what it actually stands for, uh, material or something. Um, but so what you want is here where it says by base texture name, uh, you want to change this material naming to model name plus models material. Uh, and as long as they are and as long as they are uh, both the same name, you can just hit apply. And now everything's been brought in. And so there you go. And the reason it looks a little bit different is because the lighting that we have right now is uh, is just the default lighting and it's not, not the best, but that's, that's okay. So uh, speaking of, I'm just gonna quickly change this down to like a more ready sort of orangey thing because that's just kind of what I like. Um, I just use the default light. You can use other sorts of lights, but it's kind of annoying to get the um, light mapping done properly with this. I don't fully know how to do it. I'm not. I'm just sort of doing game development stuff, so uh, you have to bear with me. Uh, I normally just, if you're doing low poly stuff, you'll see it gets this weird like lines and things in the shadows. I normally just turn the normal bias all the way down. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I tend to turn the strength down just so it looks like it's soft shadows and there you go now you have real-time shadows in there so now that we have just that stuff done that's just a picky thing you don't actually have to do that you can do whatever you want that's just a picky thing for me that i do uh so let's talk about actually getting it set up because if you look now if i hit play you'll see actually we are under the ground uh so i'm gonna move the main camera And so make sure you put your main camera in the spot, at least for this one, I'm not gonna be showing you how to do any movement stuff. So this is just going to be um, essentially being able to look around like this. You can see the camera preview in this bottom corner here. It's effectively gonna be able to look 360 degrees around this way. So you want to put it wherever you want to be the center. Effectively, it doesn't really matter which way it starts out pointing. So I'm just gonna put it here. Okay, so now open up the Google VR folder and what we need is to go into prefabs and we need GVR viewer main. So we're just going to drop that in and we're going to drop the main camera as a child of the GVR viewer main 
And so now you'll see if I hit play, we now have the Google VR thing, but you'll notice if I click and try and move, uh, you actually can't look inside of it. So for when you're in this viewport here, you have to hold alt and then now you can. And so now you can see, you can look around and everything looks good. Everything is happy. There you go. Um, and so now, now that we've done that, that's, a, that's essentially the entire tutorial really. Um, I'm just going to save this scene out. Uh, I would recommend doing that periodically just so that if anything goes wrong with Unity, it's all saved. Um, and so now we need to export it as an app. So as long as you have everything all set up properly with Android Studio and all that stuff, all you're going to want to do is come down to build settings. And so you see this little Unity thing. This means that this is the uh, OS that it's currently selected for. So right now we're selected to PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. We don't want that. We want to be on Android. So I'm just going to click that. Click switch platform. Uh, it's going to take a little while for it to uh, change stuff over. I have to be honest, I don't really know what it does right here. Um, again, I'm not really a developer. I don't really know all of this sorts of stuff. This is, I just do 3D modeling and then I've learned how this stuff works by tinkering around with it, so, uh, yeah. There we go. Beautiful. And so, now, I'm not sure why this happens, but every single time it will ask you to import additional libraries for the GVR uh, to be compatible with this version of Unity. So I'm just going to hit Import Package, and you'll notice that the things go away and nothing happens. So the thing is, you have to just close out of it and open it back up. I don't know, it's just a bug that happens. I can't really give you an explanation for why, but there you go. Leave everything all checkmarked and just hit Import. Okay, cool. So... Now, important thing, you have to click Add Open Scenes. If you don't do that, when you get your app, it'll be blank, there'll be nothing there, it'll have the Unity loading screen, and then it'll just be a black screen. So, make sure to Add Open Scenes. And then, what you want to do is, there's another option you can do as well if you want, so if this is, uh, if you don't really care, and you're just going to be, like, screwing around with this yourself, you don't have to do this, but if you want, you can hit Development Build, and then now, when you actually export it, uh, the app when you open it inside your phone in the bottom right hand corner there'll be a thing that says development builds just so that people know so if there's any bugs and stuff uh it's essentially your scapegoat <laughs> uh so if you just hit player settings as well this is kind of an uh, important thing you want to just so this is so the product name this is going to be what the app's actually called so i'm just going to leave this as c4d import uh, tutorial and i'm just going to call the company k2 that's just what the default thing that i do is uh, resolution and presentation. Important thing here, make sure to just uncheck portrait. What this will do is this will mean that it will be able to go into portrait mode and obviously Google VR doesn't work in portrait mode so you have to have it in landscape. Uh, I normally do right or left because some people's phones have different setups and stuff and it just makes life easier for them. Um, and then you have icon. I'm just gonna use one of the uh, one of the default icons that they have in here. Whenever it loads, I'm just gonna use the beach yellow one, just to show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna change everything to the beach yellow one. Okay, splash image. Don't need that. Uh, let's do logos. Let's do beach yellow just for the hell of it. And so what this is right now is that with the personal edition of Unity, at least you have to have a splash screen show up and so you can put your logo in there and then now uh, if I move this across so to pre when you this is what your game will look like when it opens so hit preview and then now you see made with unity you've got your logo there and then now you're in the game um, yeah unity logo below uh, or you can do all sequential it's up to you that just means it'll go made with unity and then it'll show your thing it's up to you. Whatever you want to do, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, no, I had a bit of a glitch there. Let's go to there. Uh, yeah, so this is just essentially what's going to show up when you first start the game. Uh, so other settings, this is also important. You want to make sure to change the bundle identifier. This is important, otherwise it won't work. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Uh, company name, I just changed that to K2. Product name, uh, we're going to call that C... For D underscore import. 
All right, so we can do all one word. Because I don't know what the rules are for that. So I'm just going to call it C4D import. Uh, I would not mess around with any of these check marks unless you know what you're doing. Uh, multi threaded rendering. Yeah, the same with the GPU skinning and the graphics jobs. I would just not mess around with that unless you know what you're doing. Version, this is kind of cool. You can do the versions. So if you have an app and you're going to be doing version, you know, 1.1, 1.2, that sort of stuff, <clears throat> then you can do that in here. Uh, minimum API level. So this is, uh, effectively the lowest Android version that would be able to play this as far as I know at least and then publishing settings yeah don't worry about that okay cool uh, so now just going to hit build and it'll ask you where you want to save the APK I wouldn't save it here it's up to you if you know how to get to your unity projects folder then you can do that uh, sorry ignore that um, but if not, then I normally just save it to the desktop somewhere, so I'm just going to call this 3.apk, and you're just going to hit save. It's going to build. It'll take a little while here. And... Actually, it'll finish. One of these days it'll finish. <laughs> cool. And there you go. Now you have your APK. And so for those of you that don't know, what you need to do now is you'd have to transfer it across to your device. Uh, you could either do that via uploading it to Google Drive and then downloading it off Google Drive or by enabling debugging mode on your phone and then transferring it across via your computer. It's entirely up to you, whichever way you want to do it. Um, again, I don't really take any responsibility if anything goes wrong with this because I, I can't really answer if anything goes wrong with this. But um, yeah, so what you have to do then is you essentially, once you've downloaded it to wherever you put it on your Android phone, click it. It'll ask you to install. It'll show a picture of your logo, and then you hit open and run, and there you go. And if I can manage to get a screen capture working on my phone, I'll show you that in the next part here. If not, then uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give it a like, uh, and I would really like it for you guys to give me comments on what you think I could have done better with this tutorial, or if there's something else that you want guys want to know how to do. Um, and I will leave all links in the description. I will leave a link to download the Cinema 4D file for this if you want to do this yourself. And yeah, I guess I will hopefully catch you guys next video. Peace.